start the lesson. Now, yesterday we was talking, we were talking about a measure of central tendency. Measures of central tendency. on the mode, the median, and the mean. And the data set we had yesterday was a raw data. Data set was a raw data, let's say, for example, uh, 47, 36, 51, and then uh, 24, uh, 67, and then 53. Let's say we have something like that. And then the mode is the most frequent data. It seems like uh, what we have here. Uh, nothing is the most frequent one, so we will say known. In the median, we need to put them in order first. If I put that in order, that's 24, 36, then 47, 51, 53, 67. So the median will be between these two numbers. Uh, don't forget, because it's between two numbers, I need to write it as the midpoint of the two numbers. Okay, I have to write it as 47 plus 51 over 2. Okay, it's 98, so that's 49. As for the mean, We take the sum for all, okay, uh, let me see, let me do it by hand. So this is 60, this is 98, this is 120, so my F is 258, and 278 divided by 5. Yeah, you can just use calculator, by the way. Somebody help me. Divided by six, thank you. I forgot, I forgot there are six data here. Divided by six. Thank you. So this is four, four, twenty four, and then thirty eight zero two. That's six for thirty six. Point three three three, huh? So this is uh, two seventy eight over six. You still need to write this though, okay? You still need to write this, okay? And then this is equals to forty six point three 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 five decimal places, okay? Five decimal places. Now that's what we did yesterday, pretty much. Now. Uh, then we go on. Of course, the number of data we have in um, reality will not be only six. In fact, we will be lucky if we will, uh, we deal with only 40. Uh, usually we deal with uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands to the point of millions. Okay, now so uh, in that situation, we will not uh, arrange or organize the data that way. Uh, let's say for example, let's see if we have the following example here. Let's say, uh, what do we do if we have this data set? Uh, let's say we have uh, 17, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, and then 19, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and then 21, 21, maybe another 21 
putting uh, this data set already being uh, sorted, right? I write it from the smallest to the largest. I even group it. Now, instead of dealing with uh, directly like this, uh, we prefer to convert that into a frequency distribution. And when we say frequency distribution, it is a table of two columns. Okay, the first column is the data. We usually we just call that X if they are numerical. And the second column is the frequency. Which we usually just shorten that to F. Now then, uh, for example, this 17 here, it is in this class 17, and it happens twice. 18 happens four times. So you see, we group them now. Okay, we group them. 19 happens three times, so on and so forth. Uh, 20 happens five times, 21 happens three times. Okay, now for every group data frequency distribution, you always need to get the sum. You need, always need to get the sum, always. always get the sum. Okay, what will that be here? 17? Okay, now this is what we call frequency distribution. Sometimes I call that group data. Actually, most of the time I call that group data. The data set being grouped in a way that uh, instead of listing all the data one by one, uh, we put them into uh, this table here, which we call frequency distribution. Now, then from here, it will be easier to uh, find, for example, the mode. So let's say that's the data set. Uh, what's the mode? And you see, what is the most frequent data in this data set? 20, that's right. Yeah, we see it from here, right? This is the most frequent. It happens five times, so the most frequent data is 20. Okay? The most frequent data is not three. No, no. This column here only tells us, this column here only tells us uh, how often it happens but the actual data are this column, okay? Now, and then how about the median? Uh, this one you need to pay attention. The median, uh, 19, uh, we don't know yet, we don't know yet. Now, we do not see the median from here, no, no, no. No, we don't see it from here because uh, this 17 is not happening only once. 8 not happening only once, 19 not on, 18 not only once, 19 not only once. No, we need to do some little computation. Okay, from that 17, from 17, the side word 17 plus 1 is 18 divided by 2 is 9. So the location or position of the median, uh, the median is data number nine. And that's the formula you showed us yesterday, right? That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the reason I show you that formula yesterday is, actu uh, is actually for here. Yeah. Once we have a lot larger data, uh, it's kind of hard for us to put them, like uh, do it one by one, right? So uh, I use that formula, the total number of data plus one, if I divide by two, we get nine. So let's see, data number nine is what? 
data number nine will be uh, the first two is two the next four is 18 so so far we have six right so this is two two plus four now we have six now six plus three is nine so data number nine is 19. Okay, now of course you can also see from here, right? You can also see from here. Data number nine will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and actually if you count it from, uh, from the top, that will be also the same data number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? Okay, so uh, the formula, the number of data plus one divided by two, tell us the position. This is the position. That's the position. That's not the median itself. That's just the position. Okay, once you put them in order, then it will be position number nine. Okay, now then, so far so good. I will give you an, uh, another example later on. But is it okay so far? Yes. Okay, now then how to find the mean? The mean, we're supposed to add all of them. The mean, we're supposed to add all of them and then divide it by 17, right? Now, but of course, the actual data, you can imagine that the actual data given to us is not in the raw data like this anymore. Okay, but in this form. So imagine how do we play, how do we analyze, how do we massage this uh, to give us the mean. And the way to do that, we do what, uh, what we call first extension. Ouch. First extension is you continue with another one column, okay, where you will multiply the frequency by the data. So instead of, for example, adding 17 plus 17, I will do 17 times 2. Are you with me? Instead of 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18, I multiply 18 times 4. Okay, I get that 72, and we keep on doing that. Okay, which part you lost? Well, in regard to the position and the median, how you got that figure uh, 19? Oh, is it, uh, is it just because it's the ninth place? Yes. In the, uh, in the, in the data set? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, the thing is, let me go back. Let me go back. Now, the thing is, usually, usually we are not given this data. We are in, so you imagine if you are given the frequency distribution uh, to start with, now then how do we know data number nine? Data number nine, take a look on the cumulative frequency. So from the top, uh, from the bottom, right? From the smallest number, 17, group 17, only two. Uh, hold on. Think of this as cumulative frequency. Oh, so, so that's, Professor, that's why you added them? So yes. Plus so, four, seven, yeah, eight, so, so eight, group eight, 17, eight, only two. Up to 18 is six. Up to 19 is nine. So I know, oh, data number nine is, data number nine is still in this group and it must be, uh, it must be 19. Okay. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm recording. I, I, I thought I forgot to record. Okay, now then we go on. Uh, suppose I want to compute the mean, right? Instead of adding them one by one, you still can do that though, but 
But the thing is like, uh, keep in mind that we don't start from here. Imagine if we don't start from here. Imagine if we start from here. Now then, how do I compute the mean? What I will do, I will compute the sum for each class first. Okay, so the sum for each class, I will multiply 17 times two. Instead of 17 plus 17, which is the sum, right? I will multiply 17 times two. That's how I get uh, 34. Okay, and then 18 times four. That will be 72, I believe. This is 57. This is 100. This is 63. Now then, that's the sum for each group, for each uh, class, right? Now then, when I add these numbers here, that will give me the sum of all data. That will be 16, 1, 11, 22. So the mean will be a 300. You are thank you. What happened? I did say I say two. So 326. Thank you very much. So the mean will be 300.6 over 17. 300.6 over 17. Let me grab my calculator. Hundred point six over seventeen. That's nineteen point one seven six four seven. Nineteen point one seven six four seven. One seven six four seven. So, Professor, um, mm -hmm. like in the original data set, uh -huh. you had when we. Uh, you, you know, you said for the for the final answer for a median, you needed to present that formula, not just the 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 solution. You know, the 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 oh, the that's uh, that's if the median is between two numbers. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, if the median is between two numbers like this, then you need to show this thing. Okay, not only the forty nine, right now, but here here the median happens to be just data number nine, not between two data. You see? Okay, so if it is between two data, then yes, I have to write it uh, as uh, the midpoint of two numbers. But here is just data number nine. Okay, uh, so it, the median is just one number. Uh, I mean, not one number, it's, it, it's always one number, but it's, uh, uh, you don't need to write it as uh, the midpoint of two numbers. Okay, now let's try one more. Let's try one more. Uh, give me a second. Let me try to quote from my old quiz. I, if I have, I just don't know where I put it though. Hmm. Let me see. Give me a second. Let me grab it from. In a second, okay. Let's say we get this one. Oops, where's my sniffing tool?
Let's say we have that example, call this example two. Okay, now suppose the question is find the mode median and Okay, what do you do first? Add the frequency. That's correct. That's correct. We need to add this first. Uh, when I add them, okay. I guess I get point now. Okay, now when I say frequency distribution, frequency distribution refers to these two columns together with the sum. This is what we mean by frequency distribution. Okay, this is what we mean by frequency distribution. Now, in our textbook and in a lot of textbooks, it's a textbook, so they teach you one thing, not necessarily the one in practice. Uh, in your textbook, when they give you frequency distribution, they usually only give you this without the sum. Without the sum. That's what they call frequency distribution. But in my class, at least, okay, in my class, when we say frequency distribution, it refers to these two columns. Okay? Now, uh, uh, I think we can answer the question, the mode, right? What's the mode? Twenty. The mode. The most frequent data. Eight, that's right. Okay, and then how about the median? We do our little scratch work, right? You can just do it on your uh, on your scratch paper. Twenty plus one divided by two, that's ten point five. So it uh, the position for the median is between data number ten and data number eleven. Then C. What is data number ten? Total two here, total six here, total twelve here. So data number ten is data number ten is eight. How about data number eleven? That's also eight. That's right. Okay. So you can imagine if you have very hard time to imagine this. I really think you should be able to imagine how the data being distributed. Okay, uh, uh, you can list them this way, six, six, six happens twice, seven happens four times, eight happens six times. Okay, and I need data number 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is data number 10. This is data number 11. Okay, but of course you will have, in you will get into very big trouble if the data size is actually around 60, let's say. Uh, it's impossible for you to do it this way. It will take too much time to be more precise. Okay, now then from there we see, oh, okay, then the median is uh, the in between, in between eight and eight, right? We know the midpoint of two same numbers must be the same number, but I still need you to write it as eight plus eight over two equal to eight. That's how you write it. That's right, Robert, that's the way you write it, okay? Now, uh, then, how about the mean? To find the mean, we need to do the first extension, fx. Yeah, I call this first extension, oops. I call this first extension. Now, the terminology, first extension, Actually, not coming from me, but it's from my professor back in Indonesia. Okay, so not a lot of, I don't think any professor here use that terminology, but I use that terminology uh, because that's how I learn it too. And you will see if you go a lot further into stats, 
uh, they do call that the first extension. Okay, they call that the first expectation to be more precise. Okay, now again, I multiply the row. This is 12, this is 28, this is 48, this is 45, this is 30. At the this is 40, this is 75, 115 plus 48. Uh, you better use your calculator. The sum is 163. Now please help me confirming with calculator. Okay, so the mean will be 163 over 20, which is uh, 8.15. Yeah, 8.15. Okay, any question here? Okay, I hope you are good. Let me erase this, not to confuse you. Okay, uh, let me pick from my other quiz and I would like you to do the problem. Give me a second. I'm so lazy to write a new a new example. So let me just give you the actual example, the actual quiz problem or maybe test problem I gave in the past. Maybe from Okay, let me ask you to try this one. Okay, ignore this first row here. We'll call this example two or example three. Huh? Example three. Find the mean. Yes, what is the mean? Find the mode. Median. OK, 
okay how many minutes i guess i give you five minutes the mode will be four the median Twenty two plus one divided by two that's eleven point fifth. So I need to look for data number eleven and data number four. Data number eleven, the cumulative is one, this is five, this is eleven. Oh, so data number eleven is data number eleven is three. How about data number four? Would that be four? That's correct. That's correct. So data number four is four. So the median will be three plus four over two, which is three point five. Okay. And then for the mean. I will do the first extension at X. That's one here, eight here, eighteen here, twenty. I'm sorry, thirty-two here, and then fifteen. Which, when I add, twenty-seven, fifty-nine, seventy-four. That would be 74 over 22. There's three point three six three six four. Okay, round to five decimal places. Five five decimal places. <clears throat> that's for uh, frequency distribution or I usually call group data but this group data is I have a more special name for this this type of group data I call it group data single point group data single point Why single point? Because each class here has exactly only one value. Each class here has only one value. That's why we call that single point. Now, the thing is, the thing is, that's the one above. Now, the one below, what we will do next is the more common case that we have in real life. Uh, we still call it uh, frequency distribution though, okay? But to be more precise, that's group data interval. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the data is being grouped in a way that each class, instead of having only one single value, it has uh, more than one single value. More than one value. Let's say, for example, uh, the ages. Like, uh, if we observe uh, the ages of people coming to uh, the school, okay, the uh, the school next to my house is a uh, it's a, a preschool and kindergarten. Okay, so in my son's class, for example, they have uh, students aged from three to five. And there's another one. This is just example, okay, that's not the real one. And then uh, the other group they have is from age from six to eight, and then nine to 11, uh, 12 to 14, uh, 
15 to 17 and 18 to 20. Of course, that's not a kindergarten anymore. Okay, just call it a school or a Sunday school if you like. Okay, and then the frequency, uh, let's say we have uh, 13, 15, uh, 21, 20, uh, and then 17, and then uh, 9. Let's say we have this group data interval, this frequency distribution. Now let's see what it, what this frequency distribution means first. What this group data means first? It means everybody, age three to five, will be put in this class, in the first class here. Okay. Now the thing is the way when we write it this way, when we write it this way, then it is not clear to us how many students, how many uh, children there actually age three. No, we don't know. We just know that in this interval, three to five, there are 13 of them, 13 of them uh, age three to five. But we don't know specifically, we don't know specifically how many of them exactly three, how many of them exactly four, how many of, of them exactly five. Okay, well, there are 13 here, but don't know. How many exactly three years old, four years old, five years old? Basically, what I'm trying to say is that uh, when we have group data interval, we have some loss of precision. The accuracy is being compromised. Okay, the accuracy is being compromised. So, for example, here, we cannot answer the question, what's the mode anymore? Okay, the accuracy is compromised. Now, but it doesn't mean we cannot do anything with that, though. We still can say something, right? Okay, so, uh, for example, we cannot, we can't answer... Uh, the mode anymore. Yes, this class has the most uh, the most frequent class. This class has the most frequent class. But it is possible. It is possible that uh, seven of them nine, seven of them ten, and seven of them eleven. Right. While the one here, it is possible, there's a chance that all 12 of them in that interval, all 12 of them, uh, all 20 of them are 12. So if that's the situation, then the mode should be 12, right? Okay, but, but uh, we don't know for sure if we only have this frequency distribution. That's the thing, okay? I was talking about the possibility earlier, right? Okay, it's possible that uh, the uh, 21 here are actually well distributed among 9, 8, 10, and 11, while in this class, all those uh, 20s are actually belong to 12, for example. Okay, we don't know. Okay, from this frequency distribution alone, we cannot tell. So if we only have this frequency distribution, we cannot answer what's the mode. We can answer what's the mode class. So instead of answering what's the mode, we can answer what is the mode class. The class that happened most often, then we will say the mode class will be the class from seven to uh, from nine to 11. Okay, now how about the median? Now, likewise, we cannot tell, there's actually a formula to estimate the median, though, but that formula is quite complicated. So I will not teach you. I'm not even sure if it's in our textbook. But there's actually a formula to estimate, not precisely, to estimate the median. Uh, but uh, the, the easiest we can answer here is uh, the median class. The class where the median located. Okay? 
This is the class where the medium located. Let's see what's the total first. It's 28 plus 41 plus 26. So the total is 95. Total is 95. Okay, so 95 plus 1 is 96. Five plus one is ninety six divided by two is forty eight. So I need data number forty eight. Data number forty eight. So this is thirteen. Uh, the cumulative here is twenty eight. The cumulative here is forty nine. Oh, so data number forty eight is located in this class. Okay. So the median class is the median class is nine to eleven as well. Okay. Now I hope I'm 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 pretty clear uh, because of the nature of this group data interval because. Uh, it's an interval, not a single point. Each one of these classes are interval. So we don't know precisely how many threes, how many fours, how many five, how many six layers, because they already group them together, okay, into one class for uh, each group three to five. Now, because we don't have such precision, we cannot answer precisely what's the mode, but we can answer what's the mode class. And we can also answer the median class, the class where the median located. Okay, now then, how about how about the how about the mean? Now, to find the mean, we supposed to we supposed to multiply f times x, right? The frequency multiplied by this. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, the problem is this is an interval. So we need to choose a number to represent this class to multiply by the 13. I need to find a number to represent this class to multiply by 15. Basically, I need to find a number to represent each class, each interval here to multiply by the frequency. Okay. Now, but then what is the best number? The best number will be the midpoint of that class. Is that accurate? No, it's not accurate, but that's the best choice. Okay, that's the best choice. Uh, keep in mind that we don't, once the data, once the accuracy is being compromised, then the best we can do is to estimate. Okay, uh, so when I ask you later on, find the mean, it must be in sense of the estimate. Okay, the best estimate for the mean. Now, uh, then to find to find the midpoint for each class, the notation is x subscript i. X subscript i. This i here refers to index. Uh, it is a subscript, which means it is written smaller and lower. Suppose this is your x. Okay, now the i is not like this. No, no, that's not that's not what I'm talking. That's not subscript. Subscript means it's written smaller and lower. Okay, that's what we mean by subscript. Let me write it down. This is i subscript. Okay, smaller and lower. Now, how to get that uh, x i? you get the midpoint of that interval, okay? Now the midpoint, uh, just like the way we did it before, the midpoint of two numbers is the sum of those two numbers divided by two.
Is it okay, everybody? Yes. Okay. Now, can you go on from there? For the rest. Yes. Mm -hmm. so this one here, for example, this will be seven, this will be 10. Now then, once you get that XI later on, you don't need to add them, by the way, you don't need to add them. Don't need to add them. Don't add them. In fact, don't add them. Okay, now once you get the XI, then you extend it, do the first extension. Okay, let me give you maybe one minute for that. This will be seven times fifteen, one times five, twenty one times ten. Seventeen times sixteen, I give up this calculator. Two seventy two is one fifty one. No, it's not one fifty one seven. That's one thousand sixty eight. So the mean will be. One thousand sixty eight over ninety five. That is eleven point two four two one one. Is it okay, everybody, for this? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm about to give you a break, but before that, let me, together with your break, let me give you one, uh, one thing to do in a second. Together with your break, you do something. Find the mean for this. Call this example one. It's example five. Find the mean. That should take you approximately five minutes if you are fast enough together with your break, 10 minutes. We come back at 9 10. 
So 9, 10, then I will go over this. Okay, let's start again. Somebody gave me two correction. Oh, somebody gave me correction earlier. This should be two here. 272, thank you. 272. So this should be 1070. This should be 1070. And this will be 11 something. Thank you. It's 11.26316. Let's see this one here. I need to find the midpoint for each class first. This will be 14, 19, 24, 9, and then F, X, I will be 7 times 14. Let me just use my calculator. That's 98, 8 times Do I make another mistake? I make a lot of computational mistake. Oh, so oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the sum was correct. Did I have to write earlier? So the sum was correct. No, that's 1,070. That's, that's correct, that's 1,070. Uh, so, uh, one of our friend corrected me uh, from the chat. I multiplied this incorrectly earlier. Yeah, I wrote 270, it's supposed to be 272. So the sum that I used earlier, 1,068, now should be corrected to uh, 1,070. And that's why I have to correct the one here too. Okay, and then, let me see, 52, who's 52, we were referring to. Oh, this 52 here, coming from uh, 13 times 4. That's 52, right? 13 times 4. Yeah, that's 52. Which are the 52 we have here? Am I okay right now? Yeah, so I make this correction earlier. Uh, let's go back to the main story. So I multiply this uh, 240 and then 6 times 174. Let me add this. This is 25. XI. Um, repeat it again. I cannot hear you clearly earlier. Somebody say something. How did you get 14? How did I get what? 14. 13. They said 14. Uh, the XI. Oh, how do I get this? Oh, the midpoint of these two. So the way you compute that, the way you compute that is 12 plus 16 divided by 2. That's 14. Okay. Now then I use my calculator to add this. 98 
plus 152 plus 240 plus 174, I get 664. So the mean will be Six hundred sixty four over thirty one. Now, uh, let me put a side note here. Side note I anticipate that when you go to work later on, or you go to a higher level and you need to do some statistical analysis, then very likely uh, you start with. Uh, this frequency distribution. Okay, either this type, the group data interval, or this type, the group data single point. Now, of course, uh, you can just use your regular calculator to compute this, but I strongly suggest you to find out how to use Excel. Okay, find out how to use. Excel. Okay, a spreadsheet. Uh, when you actually apply to to work, okay, and then your boss, let's say, asks you to pro provide or to perform some statistical analysis, your employer uh, will not. The one who interview you will not give you TI eighty four. Very likely, they just, they just point. To, hey, that's a computer, you use it, you know. And I understand some teachers actually teach you how to use calculator to compute uh, the mean, but I don't recommend you to rely too much on calculator though. I, and I'm, I'm aware that not, uh, not all of you have calculator yet, uh, TI-84, so I can show you how to use TI-84, but TI-84 has some weaknesses that you don't realize happen in real life okay so and I don't want to tell you what are those until much later okay what are the weakness so just a big warning for those people who say Thomas can I just use calculator for this uh, well in your test if you use uh, I will still in your test I will still need you to show this thing though okay so if you don't show this and you suddenly come up with the answer here equals to let's say uh, you just come up to 21.41935, then I will give you only one point. If this question worth six point and you only show me this, I will give you at most one point, maybe zero. Okay, why? Because you don't, you don't show me the detail. But Thomas, I get the right answer. Hold on, this is stats. When it comes to stats, when it comes to statistics, you need to show your work even more compared to the previous, uh, your other classes. Now, let me explain to you why in stats you need to show work. Okay? By the way, some background in stats. The purpose of stats is to explain is to explain numerically, to describe, okay? So you come up with the answer without any work, does not explain anything, okay? In fact, that's uh, against the purpose of stats. Uh, you know how people lie. I'm not saying that you lie, don't get me wrong, okay? But using stats, uh, we learn how people lie so that you are aware on how people may use statistics but at the same time lying to you. Okay, how people lie. First one, uh, of course the one we see here, no explanation. You just need to listen, you just need to accept what it is. Okay, without uh, logical explanation. 
okay? But by the way, the other way, the way to keep alive, I need you to be aware with this, is by over explaining. Oh, Thomas, I never see people over explaining. It's more about mixing truth, mixing facts with opinion. Now, uh, try to pay, pay attention when, I mean, uh, if, if somebody trying to lie to you, okay, either that person don't say anything out of guilt maybe, or just don't know how to explain it, okay? Or that person tried to explain like too much details such that we are lost in detail. Do you realize that? Okay, so when uh, there, there are, and I'm not just saying that people lie. There are times that we don't understand, suppose if you don't understand my lecture, right? It's either I don't give you enough explanation of on why we do one thing. It is also possible I give you too much details that you are lost in between. So imagine if you read your textbook chapter one and chapter two without watching the lecture video first. Okay, now they are not trying to lie to you though. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Our textbook never try to, our textbook try to make you understand. But at the same time, if you explain too much details at once, uh, your listener, your audience may get lost because you give too much details and they don't really see the big picture. Okay, so such that we, you as a listener, if I were the one explaining too much details at once, uh, you as a listener may get overwhelmed because you have so much information and uh, don't see the relationship between one set of data and another type of another information. Now, how people lie? Uh, people may lie by mixing facts. They actually dump you with a lot of facts. They just give you a lot of information at once. And together with those informations, they mix it with their opinion and present that as if that's facts. Okay, now, unfortunately, representing opinion as fact is a lie. That's not presenting the fact. You are mixing facts with opinion. Now, you will see, especially during, uh, when, as we get very, very close to presidential election, okay, we will have a lot more from, uh, from the news on those. Okay, so be very careful when you when when you listen to news or you read news. Okay, you need to be able to separate what are the facts, what are opinion. Okay, that's how then you can see, oh, you know what, uh, uh, this is what the fact says and this part only his or her opinion. Okay, now of course if you, the column you read is actually opinion column, then you know that's opinion. Okay, some people's opinion is still worth reading though. Okay, but uh, you, we, we, as person who studies statistics, we still need to know how to distinguish what, are, what is fact and what's opinion. Okay? Yeah. Now, going back, suppose you use uh, Excel, I expect you to, if I were the one interviewing you, uh, I expect you to know how to use Excel. In fact, if you are college students, you, uh, it is standard that if you are college students, you know how to use Word, you know how to use Excel. The good, thing, the good thing is we have YouTube. So anything you want to know about Word and Excel is actually already there. Now, I learned Excel approximately 25 years ago. And now it's not Excel. At that time, prior to Excel, the name still Lotus. And at that time, Word is still called Word Star. You need to be old enough to know this, <laughs> to know this software though, okay? And at that time, no YouTube. So I basically learned WordStar and Lotus uh, by, uh, I actually go into a publishing company and I stand behind those people who type the computer. And that's how I learned. I was still a teenager at the time. So I asked the owner permission, can I, can I stand behind the people who use computer? That way I learned, okay? Right now you don't need to do that anymore. 
you can just go to YouTube, right? But it's uh, those two are worth uh, worth learning. Uh, before you transfer to university, I strongly suggest you to learn uh, PowerPoint. Okay. That's very important for you to uh, will help you presenting your project, let's say. And PowerPoint, you can say, is can be seen as part of statistic also, because part of statistic is to explain, right? And PowerPoint is a tool that help, help us to explain the, the, the information, okay? So even though this is the, not related to what I teach you here, it's related to stats in general, okay? So if you have a chance, you know, uh, after this class between uh, once you pass this stats class, and then uh, you have spring break, right? I mean, summer break, uh, try to go to YouTube and learn uh, Excel. If you already know those, that's great, you know? Yeah, that's great, okay? But please don't just give me this final answer, no. And don't just say, get, tell me, oh, Thomas, I get it from my calculator. No, I need you to show me the work, and this is the work I want, okay? Now. <clears throat> Uh, that's for the mean. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go further. Notation. So tomorrow you will have very hard time because of notations. And if you have that very hard time, you are normal. Why? Because notation is something you're supposed to learn in uh, uh, intermediate algebra, algebra two. But most of you have not taken algebra two, or maybe you took it long time ago. Okay, and even if you took intermediate algebra, you didn't go that far. Now, notation, summation notation. This is called sigma. It is read as sigma. But I think I will read it as the sum of. Now, the way you write this sigma notation, it is like a capital M, a capital block M that you rotate 90 degree counterclockwise. Okay, so imagine if you, you turn this 90 degree side to the left, it becomes Okay, now that's the sigma notation. Now, sigma notation, this summation notation is not written this way, no. No, oops. Not written as an E either, no, it's not. In fact, in probability, in statistic and probability, E stands for something else. Okay, it's capital M that you turn 90 degrees sideways, okay? Now, uh, I strongly suggest you to write it in three strokes instead of only one stroke. Three strokes, what I mean like this. This is the first stroke, the second stroke, and then the third stroke. Okay, that's how we write it. Thomas, do you need to go through that detail? Trust me, if you see what I usually see from students, I. I just don't understand why. Well, anyway, that's the summation notation. Now, so if we have this notation, if we have this notation, this means sum of x of x. If we have this notation, this is sum of x squared. Okay, now suppose our data, suppose for example, suppose our this example the data, the x are, let's say three, four, four, five, six. Then the sum of x is, basically you add them. 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. 
which is one two. Right. Let me pause a little bit. Are you okay? So you basically just add them all up? That's right. Sum of x means the sum of x, the total of all those x's. Now, how about sum of x squared? Now, sum of x squared means you add the squares of those x's. So those x, you get the square first, you get the square, you get the square, you get the square, you get the square, and then you add them. Okay, that's the sum of x squared. So you are not squaring the sum, you are adding these squares. Okay, the order operation says you do this first before you add them. Okay, so this will be, uh, then you can use your calculator that I get 102. Can anybody else confirm? Okay, great. Okay, now distinguish that from, distinguish that from sum, the square of the sum. This is different. This means you get the sum of those x first and then you square it. Okay, this is equal to the sum being squared. Okay? So let me write it as a, as a, maybe as a warning instead. So that's a very common mistake. At, at, especially at the beginning. The sum of x being squared is not the same to the square of the sum of x. They are not the same. Okay, they are not the same. Now that's for the notation, for the summation notation. Now, let's see, go back to the stats part. In statistic, in statistic, what we try to do is to find out some uh, parameters in our population. I assume you already read your chapter 1 and chapter 2. We have population here. In our population, we have some parameters. The first one is capital N, that's population size. Population size is denoted by capital N. Now, using from our population, we try to find, let's say, the mean, the variance, so on and so forth. But population usually a large, uh, it's a very, very large uh, set. And it is impossible for us to find uh, uh, the, the, the most accurate, uh, for example, the, the average. Imagine, imagine I have this question. Suppose I want to find out what is the average GPA of all average GPA of all West LA College students? Now, of course, you can just go to administration and ask them, uh, right? Okay, but suppose you want to find out uh, yourself, then we're supposed to ask everybody at West LA College. Right? Now, the thing is, when you ask everybody, some people will be so proud to tell you they have 4.0 GPA. Okay? But, of course, those people who don't have that high GPA, they tend, to be, uh, they tend to be shy, and they tend not to answer your questions. Okay? They will say, what is that for? No, ask somebody else. You know? okay? So, uh, instead of then uh, asking everybody what we can do, then we ask some people. 
we call that sampling. We do sampling. Then we will get GPAs uh, of some West Allen College students, not all anymore. So notice that what happened is instead of getting uh, GPA from everybody, we actually get just the subset of that population, which we call sample. Sample is part of population, but not all of those population. Okay, now, uh, in population, in population, we want to know some uh, parameters, for example, uh, the mean, population mean, denoted by mu. Okay, but again, because for us to do census for that population, uh, takes usually takes so much time, so much manpower, uh, cost too much, and we don't need to be super precise anyway. So we do sampling now. So. What happened then, when we do sampling, we will get some statistics. The first one is the sample size, denoted by lowercase n. Sample size is denoted by lowercase n. Okay, this is capital N. This is lowercase n. Are you with me? Thomas, I write my capital N this way. No, that's a big baby. That's lower case that you write really big. Okay? Uh, this is how I write my uh, lower case N. No, that's capital N that you write super small. Okay? So it doesn't matter the size. It's about how you write it. Okay? This is lower case N. This is lower case N. When you see this, this is sample size. This is capital N. This is capital N. That represent population size. Are you with me? Okay, so it's not about the size. It's about how you write it. Thomas, you are so picky. No, I'm not picky. This is how it is written in all stats textbook, all not a single one left out okay so don't tell me uh, thomas you know what this is how i write this is how i write my capital n if that's the way you write your capital n then give me permission to write your a this way this is my a what do you think you don't want it that way right okay so don't tell me this is your way because if you want to use your way i will use my way no we have to agree that we use those the ways that already determined by those people who came before us in statistics. Okay, like it or not. Okay, yeah, like it or not. Now, I usually joke this way: uh, if it is up to me, then I will write everything with T and H. This is the mean. You know, this is the median. Uh, maybe this is the mode. You see? Okay, uh, this is the. Uh, population size and this is sample size what do you think of everything with T and H if I if it if it is really if it's really up to me I will write it using my initials no it's not up to me okay yeah so please agree with me on this whoever teacher you go to they will emphasize the same thing they may be more lenient okay uh, but no, for uh, for me, no, no, that's actually very strict. In stats class, notation is very important, okay? Now, how about sample mean? Sample mean is denoted by x bar. That's sample mean. Okay, now, so, let's go to formula. Suppose, suppose, We are given this example. Suppose we are given a population, population set, 
the data set for population is let's say 19, 24, uh, 22, 18, 37. Let's say we have something like this. Okay, now then, because this is population, then population size is? What is population size? Population size is five, that's right. What's the notation? Capital N, that's right. Okay, now then, uh, what is the sum of the data? The sum of the data is 120, that's right. So when I ask you the mean, when I ask you the mean, you will use this notation. Mu equals to 120 over 5 equals to 4. Okay. In fact, the formula for population mean If we have raw data, for population mean, there will be mu equals to the sum of x over capital N. What happens if we have sample instead? Sample mean will be actually the computation, the procedure for to compute population and sample mean, the procedure are exactly the same. It's just different in notation. Sample mean, the notation will be X bar, but what do we do is we still add all the data divided by the sample size. Are you okay with this? So right now you're just giving us the formula, right? Yeah, I'm giving you the formula. Yeah, I'm, I'm just giving you the formula right now. Now, the thing is this though. The thing is why I, I kind of like emphasize on this. Notice that what I did yesterday and today, I show you the procedure. Can you go back up a little bit, please? Mm -hmm. Here? Is it good enough? Yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, so, uh, yesterday and today, earlier, I give you the procedure. Okay, now what we are about to do right now is using those procedures together with notations, proper notations, we will write the formula. Okay. Now, what I will do tomorrow after we are done with this, what we'll do tomorrow is I will provide you the formulas. And then from those formulas, you go to the procedure. Okay, now I know a plenty of students, especially those who already passed statistic, right? Okay, uh, they took easy teacher and they just, they say this, oh, you just need to remember the formula. Oh, you just need to 84. 
And then when I give them, when they come to my class, when they became tutors, they cannot answer any or one of my questions or maybe most of my questions because what? They just memorize formulas. Okay, you may know formulas, but you don't know which formula to use. And even if I give you the formula, you don't know what that formula stands for. So it is not true to say that you just need to know the formula. No, you need to know what that formula stands for and therefore what, it, what procedures it represents. Okay, now for the raw data, for the raw data, we actually add the, da the data first and then divide by population size or add the data divided by sample size. Depends on what type of data you start with. Okay, now raw data is when the data given to us not organized like the one we have yesterday. Now, what happens if we have group data? If we have group data single point? What will the formula be? And we look back, what's the procedure? Okay, let's look back, what's the procedure? Let's look back, what's the procedure? Notice that the mean, the mean is the sum of fx divided by the sample size or the population size. The sum of fx. You add all these fx, right? Okay, divided by the population size or the sample size. So, suppose I want, so I come back here, suppose I want the population mean. The data given to me is population. That will be the sum of fx divided by population size. While if it is a sample, then the sample mean will be x bar equals to the same procedure. Okay, the same procedure. Sum of fx over lowercase n. Is it okay so far? What I teach you right now is how to change from the procedure, get the formula. And tomorrow, when we start working on variance, you will see how I give you the formula and you translate that into procedure. Okay, some formula seems to be, it's just like one line long, but when you actually work it out, it may take one page. Now, how about group data interval? Let's look back into what we did. In example five, for example, okay. How did we get these 664? This is the sum of Fxi, that's right, the sum of Fxi. So the notation later on will be the sum of Fxi. Okay, while the denominator, what we divide by, is either population size or sample size. Right? Okay, so I come back here. The population mean, if I have group data interval, that will be the sum of fxi 
buffer capital N and the sample mean will be the sum of FXI over lowercase n. One question, Professor. Uh -huh. For the uh, n, for the group data, uh, single point and interval, where do we get the n from again? I just got lost. Uh, n, capital N, lowercase n, is basically how many data you have. Okay. The number of data we have. So, for example, when we did, uh, when we did this one here, our last small example, how do we get the capital N equals to 5? How do we know it's capital N, not lowercase n? Because it's population, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and then how do we get this 5? We get that 5 from the number of data we have. Okay. Yeah, there are five data given to us. All right, okay. All right. mm -hmm. now, then uh, this is the formula we the formulas we have for the means. So just the for the means, just for the means, we actually have six formulas. Okay, for population and sample depends on how the data presented to us, either raw data, group data, single point, or group data interval. Okay, now you will see that in statistics, usually we have uh, one basic formula. In this case, this is my base. This is the basic formula. That's the basic formula. And then, uh, once the situation change, then you modify. It. Suppose, for example, that's not population. That's a sample instead. Then, of course, uh, you cannot use mu anymore. Okay, and you cannot use capital N anymore. Are you with me? So we start from one basic formula, and then once the situation changed, then we modified that formula. Now, why students at the end of semester usually get overwhelmed with formulas? You, you will see that at the end of this semester, you will have, you need to know by heart at least 40 formulas. And the problem is, the problem, not, not including how to type the calculator, <laughs> you know, okay? Now, uh, uh, then, uh, with all those formulas that you, you have during the final, even if I let students to have a cheat sheet, right? In the past, I let them use cheat sheet. And with you too, I will let you use cheat sheet. But I still have a situation when students ask me, Thomas, I don't know which formula to use. Why? There are so many formulas different situations, you need to know which formula to apply. But once you know that, oh, you know what, this is the basic formula, okay? Now, when I deal with sample, then I cannot use mu anymore, I use X bar. I cannot use capital N anymore, I use lowercase n. Now, what happens if the raw data change becomes group data? So each data, instead of being counted once, there's a frequency attached to it. Now, you will see that, you will see that From row data transition to group data, you will insert the F after the sigma notation. Do you see what I mean? Insert the frequency after the summation notation. Now, the transition from group data to, uh, from group data single point to group data interval, the transition will be the X has to be represented by instead of single point for each class, instead of single point for each class, we need to have a, a number representing each interval, each class in which is an interval. Okay, so the transition from here to the last row is you insert I. For the x. Now that's only for the formula though. But what happened with the uh, in actual situation? It means it means from this group, from this group to this group, I need to get the midpoint for each class first. Okay. Now between today and tomorrow, besides you study this, 
which I think still easy, right? Okay, focus on the, pro, the, the formula, how the procedure comes to the formula. Uh, I need you to memorize the following formulas. A lot of this, a lot of this. We will prepare, we are preparing for tomorrow, but it will be nice if you see the formulas first. Variance. For population. And sample. Later on, you will see for group data and for group data inter uh, single point in group data interval. For raw data. For each one of these, we even have uh, two formulas for each one of these. We have definition formula. Which we will not use. And computation formula. Which we will use. Okay, definition formula and computation formula. Thomas, why we have two different formulas for, uh, for each? Do they give the same result? Yes, they're supposed to give same result. Definition formula will come from uh, the way we define what we mean by population variance, okay? And then using that definition that we will see tomorrow, then we will see the formula. The formula for population variance given raw data is sigma squared. Sigma squared, it's like how you write that sigma. It's like you write an O with some hair. Okay, all with some hair. The formula is the sum of x minus mu being squared divided by capital N. The computation formula, that's the one we use when we need to compute them. The computation formula is, seems to be longer, but in reality, it's actually easier to use. That's why we call that computation formula, okay? Uh, the way, the time that we need to comp use, comp uh, the time that we use when we use computation formula is approximately three times faster compared to if we use definition formula. Using this method, we can finish the computation three times faster compared to definition formula. Computation formula may take, let's say, one hour. Definition formula will take approximately three hours. Just, just say it that way, okay? Yeah. Now, but the formula seems to be longer, though. The formula seems to be longer, but it's a lot more efficient. What's the formula? That will be capital N, the population size, times the sum of x squared minus the square of the sum of x. Over m squared. Okay. That's the population variance. 
Now the time almost up for me. Let me write the population variance for group data interval, uh, single point and group data interval. Group data single point. and group data in the form. The formula is done very, very similar to the way we did the population mean. How's that? Well, uh, population variance is sigma squared equals to, remember, uh, what I said up there, when you come from row data going to group data single point, you insert frequency after every summation notation. Now that's what I will do also here. After every summation notation, I will insert frequency. And then for computation formula, sigma square equals to the population size times the sum of insert the f, f squared minus the square of the sum of fx. Okay, I purposely use different colors so that you can see that I basically insert F here, I insert F here, I insert F here. Do you see that? Okay, and then on the denominator stays the same, population size squared. Now, I have one minute left, so I cannot ask you to experiment, but uh, remember, when we come from group data single point to group data interval, what change? I. The I, the indexing, okay, the midpoint. So you basically copy paste whatever you have here. You basically copy paste whatever you have here, but you add subscript I for every X. Okay, so F squared equals to the sum of F x i minus mu squared over population size n. And for this one here, sigma squared equals to n times the sum of f x insert subscript i squared minus the square of the sum of f x insert the indexing i over n squared. Okay, so let me put the note here. So the i goes after the x? Yeah, because that's the midpoint of the interval. That's the midpoint of the interval. Okay, that's the midpoint of the interval. Let's go back even here, right? This xi here representing the midpoint of that interval. Now, I will stop here, but uh, I will stop here, but I would like you to memorize this formula. I would like you to memorize these formulas, uh, not only the population sample means, the six formulas you have up there. I would like you to also memorize these six formulas here, especially the computation one. Now, what we will do tomorrow is to first 
to apply this formula. Okay, so now we have the formulas. What, but how do we apply them? You need to know what procedure this formula is, is representing, right? Now, once we're done with population variance, then we go to sample variance, okay? Now, please uh, mind, uh, please remember that you have a uh, homework that is due. Uh, let me go to sharing. You have an assignment that's due this Saturday. Uh, the quiz zero, this is an extra credit actually. Now, uh, what is this extra credit for? Uh, the purpose of this extra credit is to make sure you know what to do when you submit a test or a quiz back to me, any assignment back to me. Basically, what I need you to do is actually to print out uh, the, the quiz, you print it out from here. If you don't have printer, then you find out uh, underneath here what to do if you don't have print out. Okay, or you work on that and then you scan it to PDF. Now, if you don't have scanner, then you use an app. I believe I mentioned that yesterday, right? But some people could still ask me uh, after the class yesterday by email. Okay, uh, you can use an app. Okay, uh, you take the picture, change it to PDF, and then you upload it back to me under whatever the quiz it is. In this case, it's quiz zero. Okay, now some people already done a uh, very nice one. Some people still uh, download it to their computer and then they type it. Uh, and I still I still give uh, full five points. But uh, the thing is, like, try to imagine if later on. If later on you have a test, let me show you the test, uh, one of the tests I have. Suppose, for example, you have this. Suppose you have this. It's kind of hard to, it's actually kind of hard for you to type on this though. It's a lot to type and we have to admit when you write your, uh, when you do your test later on, writing it will be a lot faster compared to type. So imagine if you have to write it, notice that you still need to draw something, right? Okay, uh, so if you type it, it will take too much time. Okay, and imagine if you need to write it down. Now for you to write it down then, uh, that's why I actually make you practice uh, how to do this quiz here, okay? Now I plan to post a homework tomorrow that is due on Monday, okay? But practice with this quiz zero first. This quiz zero basically just teach you, uh, make sure that you know how to turn in, and it's, uh, it's an extra credit five points. It's extra credit five points, okay? Consider that a free point. And for those people already turn it in and then I say, uh, try to redo it, you know. Okay, uh, I basically want you to uh, gain, not only get these five points, but especially you know what to do later on when you turn in your homework, your test, or your final, okay? Uh, let me stop here.